There's no monitor, uh, mon there's no monitor, Malik. There we go, I guess, okay, okay, welcome, welcome. Is very that the shot? Welcome very, very much to Conversation. Uh, uh, program, uh, pr great play. Can we start over, Malik? Can you have a better shot? Because this is... Yeah, but could we start over or something? Is there very only confusing. two cameras here? Yeah, there's only two cameras. There is no three camera. Wow. There's no third camera. Well, he wants, he wants you in the shot, Jenny. Well, that's really unflattering. <laughs> Holy Toledo. Can we start over, Ma Malik? And just come up right with the graphic, I don't know, on me maybe. That would be easy. You keep it on me on the opening graphic. And then uh, we'll go back and forth. And I don't know. You see, it's a, see we would have been fine if it we went to 5.30. But now... I was ready at 3. I know. Well, it's, the problem is I had it in my book. Okay. 5.30. And they come and say it's 5. So that is, you have to adjust with that and everything. So we want to talk about public access. And you, you're, in fact, you're going to talk. That's good. And so you're really under pressure with the thing with, uh, with uh, Sassarino or something and all that? I don't want to talk about that. You don't want to? Okay. No. Okay. Talk about public access. Well, I wanted, I don't know, Harold. I'm sorry about Joe getting the flu. That's a drag. Do, we, do you have health care, you guys? No. Okay, 10, 9, 8, Just like the old days. 5, 4, 3, 2. Um, okay. Yeah, welcome. Welcome very much to Conversations. It's a, dear pl a pleasure to welcome to the program one of my dearest, 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 dearest friends. And that's Paula Gloria Barton. And Paula, welcome so very, very much to Conversations. I've re it's really a great pleasure talking to you. We've known each other for over the decades, it seems like centuries. And welcome very much to the set. Thank you, Harold. So good to see you. I wish to uh, Joe could be here. Sorry to say he's a little bit under the weather now. He was going to be here. But Paula is, of course, a, uh, pi uh, a, a public access uh, uh, programmer. Uh, extraordinary. She has the program, their series, daily series called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. And she is as busy as any rabbit I've ever in my life seen. She is so busy on so many different vectors of understanding the human condition in a very interesting way with her program that it's a delight to see uh, endlessly. And also she's an activist, which is very interesting. So welcome once again, my darling. Thank okay, you, Okay, so good. Now, I want to say at the outset, Paula is not only my guest now, but this is, going to ar this is going to air on March 31st of the year. What's the year, dear? It's 2014. Th Christian era, right? Yeah, Christian era. This is 2014. And she is going to be the guest speaker at a meeting of the Association of Cable Access well, Producers. And Joe, and you and Joe. If right. he gets better from the flu. Yeah, he's got the flu, and he hope he can come because you guys are a beautiful team. Well, he's they, a real uh, he's a real warrior. Absolutely. Joe, Joe really comes in through under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. Yes, that's so, right, I know. And he, he really believes in free speech profoundly. When he was organizing the Woodstock yeah, ahead, Free yeah. Festivals, mm -hmm. and the, the different bands were setting up in yeah. between, he'd always have somebody get up and talk about save the whales or whatever <laughs> the issue was yeah right uh. and he felt that it was because of that reason that uh, the powers that be were looking askance at what he did 20 years after woodstock nobody thought that there was any interest in it and people there were about a thousand people gathered at the site just reminiscing uh huh. Yeah. Or I don't know. Maybe there wasn't a thousand then, but there were a lot. Could have been. Yeah. They were just yeah. picnicking. Yeah. And they said, "Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful?" And Joe just picked up some lumber. He had a hundred dollars in his yeah, pocket. Right. And he just started to build a stage. <laughs> and and pretty soon, just just starting that. Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Turned into something that went over ten days. He did it for several years. Uh huh. And sometimes ten thousand people a day would show up. Wow, that's a lot of people. Well, it you know eventually. Mm. Yeah. And, and they were very embraced by the local community. Yeah. 
because it was bringing business to the sure, community. Sure, sure, sure. But eventually when the money people saw it, he, he even had a several million dollar contract mm -hmm. line up from Europe. Uh -huh. Remember Ugly George would have people sure. come in from France yeah. and appreciate him more than people were here? Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, so over, over in Europe, they wanted to hook this up by cable, mm -hmm. and Joe wasn't even going to be getting any of it. He uh -huh. was just going to, you know, make sure it happened. Yeah. And the man, I can't remember what his name was, who first brought the Beatles here, he actually put a lot of his money into making it happen, and uh -huh. it, it fell apart. Oh. So when the money people got involved, mm -hmm. You know, it it became a different thing. It's yeah. different going to a concert that's a yeah. hundred dollars yeah. as opposed to one that's really free. Yeah, right, right, right. And so Joe thought it really wasn't the money. The fear was the free speech. It could be. It could be. There's a lot of people worry because there sure are a lot of problems in the world now. Almost 360 degrees of dysfunction. You can see as you look around the human condition at the moment. But well, Abigail Storm was involved with that project, too. The dysfunction there was a fraudulent deed on, on that site. And I know you were at the w original Woodstock. Oh, on that, yes. On that Bethel site, even in court, in, in one court in Brooklyn, it determined through handwriting and so on that the deed was fraudulent. Wow. So because the deed was fraudulent, now uh, Time Warner, wh whoever owns that, mm -hmm. uh, the Woodstock site, it's 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 not built on the actual site because if it's challenged in the future, anything that they build on it, then they would lose. I can't follow all that legal. Uh, well, you know Baltimore. Abigail Storm. You called her the lady in the hat. Oh yes, right. Oh, she, she's wonderful she with really that big is. hat. Yeah. Thanks, right. thanks to Abigail, she got 32 people to show up in court for us. Uh huh. And that's why we were able to start prevailing because these courts that you go into are courts of limited jurisdiction. They're commercial courts, and they're there to make a profit. They mm. have Dun & Bradstreet numbers. Right. But when you actually see people in the community supporting each other and showing up, it becomes, uh, you know, it becomes apparent what it really is. Mm -hmm. And you can start to go by law then, instead of uh, being considered a legal fiction. The problem is, is we're not seen for, for being living flesh and blood souls. We're seeing even, even the word human being in mm. law mm. means some type of livestock. Uh -huh. So human resource yeah. uh, is, is where people go to get their food stamps. Yeah. I was listening yesterday in Woodstock. Somebody, uh, we were at the food pantry, was talking about how when she first came to Woodstock, she could stay for about $100 a month. It was mm. easy to find places. Yeah. And she could pick up being a musician, little jobs here and there, and mm. she could get by. Mm -hmm. Now, she said HR, and I'm sure that means human resource. Mm -hmm. If she's getting any of this government assistance, she's not allowed, if she's an artist, to be on Facebook, on YouTube, anything that might advertise her, um, her talents, because that kind of income, I guess, would be, uh, it, it couldn't be monitored. I can't follow all of this. That's a, that, the, the, you mean well, in this time, you know, in the, time, in, the, it's the becoming point, oppressive. Yeah. But the point is, is when people actually show up in court for their friends, that prevails, that reality prevails, mm -hmm. and all the legal fictions and all of the maneuvers that they do mm -hmm. uh, under a corporate structure can't exist, but the role in that I'd wanted to play. Yeah was talking about uh, how I taught myself law, mm -hmm. which particularly corporate law, which is usually pretty boring because mm -hmm. you see all these statutes and you kind of glaze over. Mm -hmm. But if you keep in mind that corporation comes from the Latin meaning body, then, Corpus, yeah. then when you look at how the human body functions and that we have different bodies, particularly male and female, you know, not to mention the racial differences in different parts of the world and the different religions. Yeah. When these different cultures want to <coughs> communicate with each other, it's done with contract law. So if you were a Hindu and you go by that scripture, or you're a Muslim with this scripture, a Christian or Jew with this scripture, all of that is put aside because you want to exchange goods and products, and you want to do it in a way that um, you can you can be safe and secure. So if somebody is honoring their contracts, they go up in stature. 
and and it, it it's it's just common no matter what your religion is that stealing isn't good fraud is not good mm. where you pretend that it's one thing but it's another thing when a contract is enforced in in any common law court of law the weight will always be on the side of the non-preparer of the contract because the non-preparer will be the more innocent party yeah and the one that's preparing it if he has some kind of trickiness in yeah. it, then it would come out like for example in the new york co-ops that's you know what Joe and I are involved with. Yeah. When I bought my Gramercy Park Co-op in in 1998, 98. I just okay, I yeah, just uh -huh. sort of assumed because I'm in a cultured city or a s civilized place, and I had a lawyer close in and a real estate agent while I was in Europe. I just assumed it it would be all done correctly. Now y you know we we look at it more deeply and we can see the whole structure is fraudulent. But you can't go to court and just say, show me the note and this is fraud. You have to do who, where, what, why, when, and how. Yeah. And that's kind of a, a, a painful process. That's but again, it was <laughs> Abigail getting people to come in court. Oh, that's yeah, she did do that. Yeah, and you were upstate doing that. And of course, you're talking about Joe Barton, who is mm -hmm. your husband. And I uh, was there at the wedding. It was really fun and everything like that. Yeah. And it was really good. We were happy. And you fell in love with him when you saw him arguing uh, down, as it were, the rule, the uh, the judgments of the judge in right. a court, and backing them up because he understood law so well right. that he could represent the interests of the people. Right. That's a good reason to fall in love with somebody. It seems to me that's a great characteristic, Mr. Darrow or Clarence yeah. Darrow. Yeah, that's yeah. good. He's really self-educated well, that I think way, also and he's a, he's a doer, and he's a he's a he, he's he's an activist, and he does not stand still for just being uh, uh, assor uh, assaulted by ear, uh, uh, unethical uh, uh, authorities uh, exercising their power over people illegitimately when it can be fought Yeah, he, he has a sense of freedom. Yeah, right, and, and freedom think, and justice, and deep think, sense of justice. Yeah, but yeah. right now in these courts, it's really not about justice. But, and we're not asking for justice or mercy, it's only due process. Yeah, okay. So I think my Fair attraction enough, yeah. to Joe was just a logical extension of my interest in spirituality uh -huh. because it's based on law. Uh huh. Okay. You, you, you think law is yeah. sort of a dry subject, <laughs> and spirituality is kind of woo woo and, hmm. and yeah. sort of more fun and easy. Uh huh. But a, a real spiritual endeavor is, is, is extremely serious. Why are we here? Yeah, the larger is issues. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. And I know you used to talk about uh, the importance of material scarcity, and that's and that ag again gets back to corpus to the body. So corporations per se <coughs> are not bad. Obviously, people can do things better mm -hmm. when they're united, and you have, uh, uh, you know, a, a product that's a result not just of of one person or even a, even a couple too, mm. but of a group of people, mm -hmm. and so in order to move forward with that endeavor, mm -hmm. that's when you have the contracts and the laws and the rules and regulations, so that everybody's position is honored, mm -hmm. and nobody is separated from the fruits of their labor. Different people have different abilities. Yeah. Different people have different things that they like. Joe and I are good in court. Yeah. It's not that mm. we like to go to court. It's a very scary, terrifying thing to do. It's wonderful to watch you doing it or being able to. I because don't think so you've many ever, people are like sheep led to slaughter. They just go in and ka chink, ka chink, ka chink, and, and, and they can't understand the nuance of the law. And it's very disadvantageous right. toward the mass of the people. And that's what very oppressive yeah, and that's the what law can be. Yeah, and that's what Joe told me. He said, mm. if you, you just, they're like sheep going to the slaughter. Right. And he, he, have, he has a real heart about it. Yeah. You know, really feeling for these people. He's got a particularly strong uh, and uh, uh, sense of uh, empathy for the, th what, two and a half million people that have been locked up in our prisons over, the inf uh, over laws. And he wants to see people freed from prison because the, the, the rationale for putting them in prison is obscenely unjust and, uh, and should be fought. And it's, it's beginning to and surface the judges now. Are, and the judges say they're all there by consent.
they just don't realize they've consented. Wow. It can be just as innocent as the, the judge saying, do you understand the charges? Yeah, do you and stand under them? It's yeah. A, yeah. It's, and it, and it, it's, it's trickery. It's, it's, it's trickery. It's, it's often called word art, yeah. cra word craft. But, uh -huh. but when you start understanding real law, then, then you can see through the word craft. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want, we always tell people in our work, don't do what we're doing until you understand what we're doing. Well, because people can be extremely uh, put in danger. Oh, yeah. And it would seem to me that what you know today, the way you're going, or let's say look, what you knew a year ago has been greatly enhanced in this last year, no and question. what you know today will be greatly enhanced in your next year because you're learning all the time. And not even years. So when can you have enough knowledge to be able to take the reins of being active, an activist in the court? How well studied a thousand years, a uh, hundred years, twenty years before you can really know everything so that you can take the reins and, and assert your own right in the courts where the justice is supposed to be served by one and do one and all, and they are not. It's just a secret cabal of uh, wizardry and language manipulation right. of people, and totally unjust in its overall functioning. That should be observed and yeah. uh, called out by the people I of the society. I think that's well said. That's, yeah. well, that's very well said. Well, but people have to have a desire also to, <coughs> uh, to have this knowledge. Yeah, but that, what I'm trying to get they at in a way is you, it would be a lifetime to learn everything. And you're going to learn more next week. No, you week. don't need to learn. Well, you I mean, know, you, when you can you make, a, a, they do pass a bar exam. They have to learn certain, my daddy was a lawyer, you know, and I was raised on Clarence Darrow for the descent. He was a lawyer. And you had to pass a bar exam. John Kennedy failed it two times. Junior failed it three times before he passed it. Well, good for him. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're not we're not real uh, you know fans I'm of the American bar. That's no, part I of know the problem. because you think it's there's a, a missing Thirteenth Amendment that said judges should not come from a lawyer class. Mm -hmm. A lawyer class is a more privileged class. Mm -hmm. Now that's not to say that 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 there's not, like I said earlier, different people like to do different things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But but along with privilege comes responsibility. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you want to see it that way. Yeah. Right. 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 So. Um, well. Anyway. So we we got we that's part of what brought you two together. If I'm not mistaken, I we, you and I are friends. We we were friends before you knew Joe. And what you fell you fell in love with. You were watching him defend somebody effectively in a court, arguing the law, understanding it better than the judge who was trying to interpret the law in his own way. And that is something that caused you to fall in love with the man on the well, spot. Yeah, I mean, that's I like mean, something should be a movie. Yeah. I, like a movie. Do you see how dramatic that would be? Yeah, who would there, play you? Yeah, you there, could play you, I guess. <laughs> no, yeah. I can't play you. Uh, anyway, um, what no, a love no, story. That's, that's true. That's yeah. true. I, I mean, it will only be a movie if this country pulls out of its condition of, yeah. of just accepting this. Yeah. Because along with federal funding, for example, comes this passivity where they're being taken care of, where people are being taken care of, and people kind of get used to that. Uh -huh. So when you go to court and you stand up for yourself, you have to take responsibility for yourself. Yeah. So and and I think what you're talking I mean, about, do it doesn't yeah. have to be a thousand years from now. I think the final maturity comes when you're able to say to the judge, "Is this really worth playing this theater?" Or or have the judge or whoever's controlling the judge yeah. feel that the people are now ready that they that they want to know that they can be responsible. They're not poor dears. They can't, they can't handle the responsibility or they can't handle all of this wealth. Someone has said- Handling all this what? Wealth. wealth. This country is wealthy. Yeah, yeah. It has tremendous resources. Walter Burian with the Certified Financial Annual Report said, we could pay the national debt a thousand times over. Mm -hmm. And I got the first inkling of that when you were interviewing Robert Ashford at your little studio on uh, 36th Street. Mm -hmm. It was like I was doing the switch there with Maggie. I remember, yeah, yeah. And, and, a, and a real light bulb went off when he talked about binary economics and he explained, uh, I don't know, you want to explain that? Well, no, I, I can. I mean, that's just uh, my own thing about how studying economics and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, 
my, my, I guess the larger issue I was looking at is, are you ever able to be wise enough or have enough information, particularly if you're looking at a comprehensive understanding of the human condition within the structure of the universe and all the interconnections and nuance of all the interconnections between a real systems understanding of what's going on in the universe, are you ever able to have enough of that to where you could assert a, an operating manual for spaceship Earth that would be true? rather than always changing and synergistically emerging a new way like a Roman candle going off. Are you ever able to have enough knowledge, or collectively, the human society, have enough knowledge to really put up a comprehensive understanding of where we are in terms of universe and evolutionary understanding and so forth? Or is that inherently one of an ever uh, gaining new nuanced knowledge that one has to gain before they can do anything? doing something is always being done within less than a truly comprehensive context because we don't have an overall context of understanding what's going on. Do you understand? How can anybody be can active be without God? being limited? Can we yeah, be, be God? Be, not know God everything. is a little bit too much because that Can we know everything? Uh, well, no, be involved, yes, that's right. Can we know be, no, and have a pattern worthy of asserting actively and suggesting a pattern for humanity if we're short of having a knowledge that's equal, is uh, comprehensively appropriate enough to the evolutionary capability that's available to us now, I think we're we're always in the obviously dark. Obviously, the answer is no. Okay, that's what I think. Yeah, that's why I could never be an activist. I mean, I wouldn't want to be an no, activist on I, any I, one I, little I, thing. I understand what you're saying because it's pretty obvious. People in trying to solve one problem oftentimes make it worse yeah. because they don't have all the knowledge. Right. Well, it's inherent almost. But at least you can be faithful to each moment as it comes. I mean, yeah, I yeah. Okay, that's some, interesting. Somebody told me. I mean, this will sound racist. It's not meant that, and I'll correct mm. it. Of course, it's orthodox, not. I know it's not. Orthodox Jews consider everybody else milk cows to be milked. Well, that's Now, if uh, that's true, I could even I could even excuse that with due process because if you actually look at the laws, uh, particularly say the marijuana laws or the drug laws, they come under agriculture. And it and the and the language is man and other animals. And you can see with the human resource, you know, yeah. center, you you see that language too. Mm. But if the cow can start to articulate, I want my milk back, that's no longer a cow. Then maybe at that point you come into the club. Maybe the cow goes from being a cow to being an Orthodox Jew. Because if you actually look into um, old religions, like I know in the Hindus, yeah. they very much revere the cow. <coughs> the whole life goes uh, they around They wander all it. over the place in India. So, I yeah, but let me tell you, okay. when you milk, if you owned a cow, if you were lucky enough to own a cow, you don't take milk from the cow until the cow has fed her calf. I think that's then true. Then if there's any extra, then you take that. So I would say if Orthodox Jews believe that everyone else is, are cows to be milked, they also have rules and regulations how to take care of your cows. So the question is, do we want to step out of this status of being taken care of, being on the dole, and, and to be yeah. responsible for ourselves. But if we do decide we want to be responsible for ourselves, then we say, now we want access to the resources. Then you would have the Georges, the Henry George people, you know, talk about the problem being um, escalating rents, always keep human beings away from the resources that they need to create wealth. Uh, and that the yeah. problem is not capitalism, the problem is monopoly. He, he, you know, he, Henry George used that model. It's like you're on top of a ship, mm. and it's got huge resources under, yeah. you know, in the hole. In the, in yeah. the hull, yeah. mm. And somebody is controlling. What do you call that? The hatch. The you know, hatch. Uh, you, you don't let anyone in because you've got a toll on this, on this hatch, yeah, so okay. that you can't go in and get it all. Uh -huh. So if you get rid of that toll, yeah. you could, you could, you could share the abundance. Then yeah. when you share it. Now, the beauty of sharing it is then you get other human beings interacting with these resources, and that's where wealth is. Otherwise, if somebody owns vast tracts of land, but it's all wilderness, how much wealth can they actually get out of it? You well, actually need people to go in there yeah. and to develop it 
and uh, and make it into something. Yeah, valuable. I think that's true. I, I I I'm just interested in the fact that uh, uh, we're all one species. That's interesting to me. And we've I, and did you see they found that guy in Georgia, an Austro uh, 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 Homo uh, um, a Homo erectus, yeah, 1.8 million years ago in the country of Georgia. And that the immediate ancestor to our species, Homo sapien, was not Homo habilis, as I'd been saying on the air. I was mistaken. Synergy, it's like emerging properties, new learning is going on all the time. So you had to be subject to a, a system that sees things as uh, behaviors of systems unpredicted by the sum of its parts. One could add maximally engaged or understood. But so that we were here, to, and apparently it's about 200,000 years, as we understand evolutionarily, that the species appeared in Africa to a very small group. And then they were disseminated. So that's 10,000 generations that we've been here. And I all the know, resources were here when we came out of the cave. We came out of the cave, all the iron, all the gold, all the... Uh, Oil, all the natural well, gas. Well, in, in court, they would say that's all hearsay. Well, <laughs> I know. Well, they would have some sort of an explanation. I mean, there's for something it. I've learned from court. Yeah. Well, that I've, I've, you've learned how to be logical in your thinking. I well, remember logical, Stuart, you think Stuart the, Dam brought. Yeah. I brought up to him. I, I really enjoyed that guest of yours, Stuart Dam. Stuart, I just talk, had a good talk with him the other day. Yeah. yeah. He's doing a lot of stuff. Now. I He's was, a bright I was, guy. Yeah. I was talking about some of the questions about the DNA signature not being accurate. And he said, um, because this came to my attention, they said Israeli scientists were questioning the accuracy of the DNA signature. I'm not sure what so that I means. So I sent an email over to a friend of mine who used to work with the early DNA researchers. Uh -huh. And I got a very cryptic email back. A lot of times he doesn't answer me because my questions are usually have political ramifications right. that uh -huh. he doesn't want to get involved in right. because he right. dreams Fair someday enough. of getting back into that funding. Yes. And so he said, open secret among us DNA guys. And I said, my God, open secret. And then when I told Richard Dambrot, his comment was, well, it's unfortunate when that spills over into the legal community. And I said, mm. legal community? I, I mean, what, who knows that the DNA signature isn't accurate? What does that mean, DNA signature isn't accurate? What do you mean by that? I don't know what the it, term it, means. They're, they're indicating you can do gene splicing and it's very specific. You know, you're going to get a certain result and particularly, say, semen samples. You can tell exactly who did the rape. You can, you can see by the DNA sample. So by saying that it's inaccurate, what that means is whoever controls... You mean the sequencing of the DNA? Yeah. It's not accurate. Well, so I told this to Richard okay. Dambrot, mm -hmm. and he said that's unfortunate because I said, look, at this means that the, the two parties that know the real inside secret that the DNA samples are not accurate would be the top DNA scientists that are keeping mum because they want the fabulous funding and the poor guy in prison who knows he didn't do it. Well, he I knows he didn't do it. So uh, he'll, he'll okay. so oftentimes you'll find in prison yeah. when you're actually with the disadvantaged, you learn a lot more. When I started to go, I, I mean, there's a whole other universe going on in New York in the soup kitchens, an entire other universe. Mm. And when I started going into the soup kitchens, yeah. I started to learn uh -huh. a lot. Uh -huh. by listening to people's stories firsthand. Right. It, it really perfected me understanding housing court. I got arrested the other day in housing court. Did you really? God, you I keep was, getting into it trouble, was, it girl. Was, well, it was, Good for you. it was 12 degrees below zero. I mean, not <laughs> below. It was 12 degrees outside. It was so cold. Yeah, really, yeah. And people were lined up clear down the block. And so I went in, and I was really confident and happy about my paperwork. But I felt at least I could make a statement. So to the officer, I said, you know, it's so cold down, th down there. I said, I'm a senior citizen. And she goes, half the people are seniors. And she was right. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really asking for privilege. But I said, let me just wait here and get your supervisor, because I just kind of wanted to get a statement on the record. Mm -hmm. And she said, you can't be there, because if you just stand there, you're a threat, because you might have guns on you. And I said, well, search me. And she said, well, there's not enough staff to search you. And mm. so she goes back to find her, her supervisor, and her supervisor couldn't come forward. And f the final thing was that, that caused the showdown was she said, you must obey. Mm. 
Mm. Well, I knew that I didn't have to obey, mm -hmm. that I was a free person and yeah, so on. Yeah, yeah. But, that's, but that's what she was taught and she was told. She was perfect. And by the way, come to court May 5th for my disorderly conduct or disturbing the peace charge. Oh, that, yeah. that will be there. I'll, I'll that's anno announce that on Very often show. you and Joe have had people come to court to support you and that help. Yeah. Because and, particularly and when you've got somebody who's articulately able to address yeah. the issues like you two are. Well, yeah. I, hope, I hope she shows up and she hopes so too because we wound up to be quite good friends. And while I was in handcuffs for the hour or so and they were trying to figure out what to do with me, mm. Uh, because I didn't know if uh, if I gave my passport, if the case would come up that we had done in Hurley, mm. when uh, when Joe was pulled yeah, over for that, at, yeah. at, at 1.30 in the morning, he had just a little, you know, less than an ounce of pot, mm. but I had the oil, mm. which I was taking for a lump in my breast, mm -hmm. and I was getting wonderful results with it. Yeah, and eventually, it's I wish you yeah. came to court with us. Mm -hmm. I know it was far away. And yeah, early. it's too far to go. But yeah. the stenographer came up. She was a lady, you know, the court reporter, and she just pressed her card into my hand. And I think what touched her was when I said, why should I be denied the cure for cancer just because I'm poor? Right, and Rick Simpson's thing is you know, like that. There's all these kind but of I, things. So I didn't know if that would show up, and, yeah. and I thought, oh, man, you know, I really don't. It, if I really wanted to press it to make a statement, mm. I would have been taken down to the 5th Precinct or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, you know, as it was, I surrendered my passport, and they saw there was nothing on there. But I honestly think, because a passport doesn't have your address on it, she grabbed from me against my consent, and, you know, she was careful, but they were desperate. Mm -hmm. uh, a big, uh, you know, uh, like a FedEx thing that yeah. was sent from California by a doctor uh, of the, uh, the seminar on cannabis that was in Northern California. Mm. And she saw it was to a Gramercy Park address. Ah, and right, I, and I honestly think yeah. that kind of slanted things in mm. my favor, mm. I hate to say it. Mm -hmm. But the reason, and, and the final result, I saw her the other day because I go to court and file new paperwork. You guys are in court all the and time I, and filing I saw papers. Her, yeah. her name is Ida. She's a really excellent person, mm. excellent policeman. I mean, some of the policemen, you, you know, Joe and I are not a, against law and order by no. any means. We're not against police by any means. We no, feel you want to use the law to the advantage yeah, of the people. If you don't have as law. As it's set up, right. If you don't have law. You got law, an anarchy, yeah. You're going to have chaos yeah, on yeah, the streets, right. and then who's going to have the brunt? It's going right. to be the police. But it's got to be able to serve the people, not only the people who have the people who yeah. can hire the people who can pull the wool over the eyes of the people. Yeah. Which is entirely too much the case, it seems to me. Yeah. Yeah, and the way and, it works. And she, she knew it. She said, you seem like a nice lady. And as she looked in my eyes. She mm. said it reminded me of her mother. And, mm. and I said, you know, I'm sure you have a really nice mother. It's just so sad <laughs> yeah, to see beautiful. people thrown out of their houses. Yeah, I know. Have yeah. empty houses. Yeah, yeah. The injustice of it all. And have this fraud going on. Yeah, the and, and we even went to the bank the other day because we got a 1099A. What the heck is that? It means that when you sell something, there's tax consequences. Uh -huh. But this fraudulent sale that took place when I was in California, yeah. there's now $400,000 somewhere that they're indicating to come down and get. And they have something like 88000 which looks to be the money that I thought I was borrowing from the bank. But when you actually investigate it and ask about it, it's property taxes. Mm. So there's so much uh, deception. Chicanery? Yeah, deception going on. Oh. And you could see the nice man at the bank was being very professional. You never use the F word. The F word is foreclosure. Yeah, okay. So you can see stuff comes up on their screen, and they're very nice. But you can tell by the tone and how they're acting. They think, well, you're really a deadbeat that hasn't been paying. Mm -hmm. But as he looked into it more and we started to explain more, I said, you realize there's, there's in, the, in the past month or so, six weeks, 24x J.P. Morgan traders have jumped off of buildings, mm -hmm. and and then you know we do a little more work on the computer, and either he said or I said, and he agreed, maybe they didn't jump off voluntarily, you know one of these f uh, jumped off the building from a place where he had no access to the roof. Mm -hmm. Now if s 20 people have been thrown out of buildings, mm -hmm. how many more have been threatened? 
as the investigation of the bank fraud starts to go up the chain. It is going up now, yeah. That's, well, see, what, is, jo yeah. what Joe explained to me, because being a cannabis provider since way back, yeah. is if you've got the guy on top, starts to see that an investigation is going to the guys on bottom. Say they're bringing in a ton of heroin, mm -hmm. and they start to distribute it through their channels then you start to see some people on the street level getting busted. Then they're squeezed by the police to give up their source. Then the police then goes to their immediate source. Then mm. that guy gives up, his guy gives up, his guy. It's the same thing with the bank fraud. Yeah, now. right, right, right. And so it, either, yeah. either that or maybe they had some inside info and they started to do some trading and thought they were going to go home with uh, $10 million right. that day and someone said, you don't think you're going home with that that money, right. who knows what's yeah. going on. Well, but, somebody but, but, who but, knows. But the point is, yeah. everywhere we go, like in the bank, if we sit down and explain to people, we get people on our side. Good, that's really good human, that you're able to I, do I that. I should say human beings because that means an animal, but yeah. living, s flesh and blood living soul. Yeah, that's a term that you use there. And it's good to have somebody who can understand things the way you and Joe do and can, in a very real sense, represent the interests of a great number of human beings that cannot understand that adequately, and that then also that there is a thing called public access where some of this knowledge that you have and videotape that shows what's going on and uh, instructing the people in a way that can get them to understand that they have rights and they can be an informed activist in terms of the things that protect their rights or the rights of their fellow citizens, that's a very important qu thing that makes public access particularly relevant in terms of bringing about a more just and well-organized world, isn't it's it? It's huge. Harold. It's important. That's what you're going to be huge. talking to us tonight yeah. about AACAP, about a public access right. and the importance of it. Right. And that's sort of, in a sense, what we were trying right. to do with this program now. You demonstrate it with the fact that you show that you're able to do this in a way that is illustrative uh, and I instructive for other people to follow in the course that you follow. You follow Joe, yeah. and he's followed others, and it's an important yeah, educational pre uh, uh, yeah. activity. Yeah. No, I've learned a, and, lot, a lot from you. You use the term autodidactic. Autodidactic, self-teaching, self self-teaching. Yeah. Self yeah. Yeah. Because if you take a group of people and they just exercise their right to free speech, mm -hmm. no matter what they're freely talking about, eventually they're going to arrive at a greater understanding. Mm -hmm. Now later on that greater understanding might be sequestered away mm -hmm. and that's the danger. As soon as the free speech is stopped, mm -hmm. so many other things are stopped. That's why I wanted the topic to be public access as the court of record. The okay. real, real mm -hmm. court of record because there was one good judge up in Hurley, uh, Judge John Parker, and had, had, had I been uh, sharper and more knowledgeable at the arraignment, I could have stopped it. We could have stopped it, but, but we didn't. We didn't answer it, it right, and so later on when he could see where we were going, he actually sort of took me aside off the record, not even off, and he told me, these are not courts of real record. These are not courts of record. Mm -hmm. Well, I was so shocked. I didn't know what to say. If this isn't a court of record, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. But right now, here we are, we're recording this show, yeah. and it's going out ostensibly to 650,000 households Well, that's in the number of people that subscribe, yeah, you to know, There's cable. that potential. Yeah, that's and Time with, Warner, with there's others too, yeah. But, but, you know, if we have free speech, we also should have free access to all of the data. We should know who we're going out right. to, and we should be able to receive feedback from who we're going out to so we know how it's being gauged. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're excited about what you're delivering, what's the use if people aren't understanding? Well, this is important information. And let me underscore the fact that you, this is going to air on the 31st. That's Monday. You'll be watching this program on the 31st of the year 2014 of the Christian era. And this evening at our place, it's at 241 West 36th Street, Paula Gloria is going to be talking as a representative of, of the importance of public access and Manhattan Neighborhood Network, for that matter, as a means by which the public can be informed on important issues that are in their own interest. So I'll make that point. So we invite people to come 
Yes. At uh, seven o'clock, after seven o'clock, two forty-one West thirty-six. Two forty-one West thirty-sixth Street, thirteenth floor. So do that. Right, and I'll be also, 13. <laughs> and I'm wondering, uh, Paul, you brought in a clip. I think it's rather longish clip, but I'm wondering, is that available to? And hello. Um, no, I was going to let you have the scoop. Uh, for Monday, that's why I wanted as the roll-in, but I don't know what our time Well, no, is but it, well, the time, that's what I'm, uh, hello, Malik in the booth. Could you talk to me for a second, Malik? Okay, just come on in and talk. If we could put if that you could 19 talk. minutes in. It hello, just, Malik. Hi. Yeah, have you got access to the clip that she brought? Yes. A DVD? Could you play it so we could hear could it? Could you play that now, Malik, please? Right. Thank, Thank you. you. And so Harold can hear it too. Yeah, so I can hear it. Also, I definitely want you to hear it. Okay, here we go. And then can, turn on. Can you make it loud? Can you make it so we can hear? Thank you, Harold. Can we hear? Oh, good. I gotta go get the time. My God, ma'am. Television land. This is. Oh, where? Let, which one? woman looks Look like Look at that. That's almost. Yeah. She does. I wonder if people, young people remember Bridget Bardot. I don't know. So Joe's going to show me an article about sex. And this is in the Cosmopolitan, but it could be in any one of these types of magazines. Yeah, it is in Cosmopolitan. <clears throat> And from a man's point of view, <laughs> that would be good. We can say cosmopolitan from a man's point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah. So it... it <laughs> I can't believe women read this garbage. <laughs> and they believe it. <laughs> because they keep buying it? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the, the, there was ten hot secrets for <laughs> better sex. <laughs> it's... the. It, it, it's one of the lamest things I've ever read. <laughs> so what you're saying, it wouldn't necessarily turn men on, but if women think it does, whether it turns men on or not, they're selling magazines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't really care. <laughs> there it is. Super passionate sex. Some of the lamest stuff I've ever read. Fake chastity belt? Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Can sex make you skinnier? Did you read that article on the bus? Yeah, yeah, the guy I'm seeking takes forever to orgasm. What does that mean? 
means you're lucky, lady. <laughs> Most guys have problems with premature ejaculation. <laughs> Now, is this with the guy's point of view? No. no. This is really stupid, stupid stuff. I can't find... Where's the one I want you to read, though? So Joe wants me to read this so I can kind of be a... <laughs> what? No, only because you can... Only because it's the way I don't want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, girls in the gentlemen's club. That's another article. Now they're saying that you girls all ought to go out to all these topless places. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> they can't get enough guys in because the bimbos are too bimboish. So now they start saying, oh, you girls should go in there and check it out. <laughs> I can't find the other. I can't find well, the. That's other. supposed to be that women have more jobs now and they can pay for sex too, right? And isn't this a commercial publication? No, but uh, that's the one. Uh, you can read okay. that one first. I'll read it. But I can't find the other one. Say something on this one. Okay. I just want Paula to read this to see the lame stuff that they put in for you women about. Look at super. What is it? Super passionate sex. You know, and when you read it, you're not going to learn anything about super passionate sex. It's as lame as it comes. <laughs> it says, ah, the holy grail of getting it on. It's that richer, more connected sex that makes you smile every time you think about it. But stop short of being romance novel cheesy. And yes, it exists. Here's how to find the sweet spot. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> Okay, all men should read Cosmopolitan, and you will know why your girlfriend is so lame. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is pointing out something to me here. Look at her neck. They stretched her neck because for some reason they tend to think that that's more beautiful and that women should look like that. I've never seen a woman with a neck like that. They turned her into a giraffe. It was some kind of Photoshop. And I never thought a giraffe was sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this one. Look at this. It says, Major Eye Candy. If I was out trying to pick up a woman, and I ran into a woman with this nonsense on her face, she would be the last woman I would pick up. <laughs> Cars and sex. Rent his most coveted hot rod. Oh, do you want to let me start again? This article is entitled Love, Lust, and Other Stuff. And it says, Rev his engine. Men love nothing more than cars and sex. Rent his most coveted hot rod. Coveted. Coveted hot rod. And have a backseat romp before dinner at your favorite spot. Sports car plus sex, best girlfriend ever. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it sounds like they want to rent sports cars. Yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, lady, if you got to rent a car right, to impress him, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. And, you know, and just so much stuff in this, I just... <laughs> Why do you women buy this? It's like some stuff that they're telling you, oh, the great secret about sex is so obvious that any idiot should be able to, uh, should know it already and not have to buy Cosmopolitan to find it out. It's just <coughs> men should read this because it's so funny what women think. If this is what women think, no wonder men and women have a problem communicating. <laughs> Yep. This book, Cosmopolitan, is 90% them trying to sell women stuff like, yeah. this will make you sexy, you need this, if you don't have this, the man ain't going to go out with you, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's oh. But the truth is men aren't thinking about all those things. None right? of it, none of it, you know? It, it <laughs> they want people to think that men 
they, they, they totally cater to women, giving women the illusion that men think in this way. Men don't think in this way yet at all. You know? <laughs> it, it blows my mind. This book. The more I love reading these books because books. it helps me to understand why I've never been able to understand women. <laughs> because they read this fucking nonsense and they believe it. I mean, this is a popular book that women all flock to. And <laughs> it just blows my mind. I, there was something in here I, I wanted to show you. I'll read you if I can find it. Put it on pause for a second. It was one of the stupidest articles. It's, you gotta show it. The fake chastity belt, right? And after reading it says, if you don't, if you don't want to, if you don't want to look too forward with your boyfriend or too free, you know, and give it up too soon, <laughs> you should wear this stuff that's unsexy, <laughs> right? And they go through this whole thing of you can wear these this this this, this stupid stuff or your old panties with maybe a hole in the butt. You know, that cover everything, that are unsexy looking, right? And it's going to kind of keep you from having sex. Or you can let your, your pubic hairs grow in so you got this super bush that you're embarrassed to show him. So it'll keep you from having sex with him, even though you might want to, right? You, that, right? This is to keep you from doing what you want to do, right? <laughs> But then in the end of the article, they say, but just in case you decide to do it, slip in the bathroom when he's not looking, take this stuff off, and hide it between the towels. <laughs> right? And, you know? <laughs> it's crazier and crazier. There's more stuff I read in these magazines. <laughs> Okay. This one. Here's another one. I t I take too long to finish. What should I What should I have him do? Right. It goes in this case. Finish what? Sex. Oh. oh. To get off for for her to get off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in this case, uh, you're the crucial puzzle puzzle piece. You need to uh, figure out what gets you off before you even get into bed with him. That should be obvious. <laughs> Play around to see what you like. Slow strokes on your clitoris, a vibrator, a fantasy. Once you know how you roll, tell him. Or if sex talk isn't your strength, no worries. It's not for everyone. Guide his hands, P.S., just allow yourself to enjoy the moment. Overthinking your orgasm can shut down your sexual response, making it harder to finish. Now, that is so stupid. You know what I mean? It's like, it's such obvious stuff that they got to write a magazine and give, you know. Well, sometimes when people see things in print, they trust it more. And then if you repeat the obvious, then you look like the authority because you just said something obvious. You're, you're right. You're right. You know? Wow, you must be an authority. You must be a genius. Right. <laughs> it, it just blows my mind, you know. Um, first of all, all women should know their own body before they get together with a man. And if a woman can't get herself off, what makes her think that some guy's going to be able to get her off, you know? <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> you did, Joe. Uh, well. <laughs> cut that out of this tape. <laughs> there was a couple other things in here that really... No, the reason I'm saying is because on Howard Stern, they asked me the question if I masturbated. 
And I said, no. But now I see your logic of what you're talking about. So I think... I, you know, once again, I really believe that they, instead of telling women and men, oh, don't do sex, don't do sex, you don't, you know... They should teach masturbation. I said this before. They should teach masturbation in school. Not have the kids masturbating in school, but teach them what masturbation is about and tell them for homework tonight, go <laughs> home and get yourself off. Because if women knew how to get themselves off before they were ever with a man, they wouldn't be under all this tension of, what do I do? Well, you know, uh, what does he expect, you know? Not what he expects. The whole thing about sex is supposed to be both sides have a good time, you know? And if you're not having a good time, you're definitely doing it wrong. Is that like in what Eustace Mullen said about court? If you're not having fun, you're doing something wrong? Yeah, same thing with sex. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you ain't having a good time and if it don't feel good, you're doing something wrong, you know? But you need to know yourself before you can expect some guy to get you off, or women, or, you well, know? They say that in court, too. A lot of Gene Keating said that ultimately there's no magic bullet, right paperwork, right law to quote, but it's knowing who you are when you go in the courtroom. Right. And that's why I find with older people that, you know, the adult protective services and so on, I just went and saw a lady who's got a beautiful collection of things because she was an antique stealer. 25-year-old doing things stuff. <laughs> so we had to get the time up? Well, she just oh, there we are. Okay, welcome. That's really funny. That's really funny guy. He's such a beautiful guy, so direct and everything like that. And it's funny. It's like a Cary Grant and uh, what, Catherine Hepburn yeah. scene or something. No, in court, in court, once the prosecutor was going to him, well, I see this isn't your first rodeo, you know, yeah. a young whippersnapper. Yeah, prosecutor. right, right. And the old judge was looking, knowing that Joe did know a kind of, because he told the prosecutor, he said, I know a law they don't teach in law school. Mm. And, and the case unfolded, and that's yeah. where we are now. Well, he's so direct, in it, and he's like that in court, and he's able to do it, and he studied over a long, uh, long period of time the law and understands it in real terms where he can go in and argue pro se or for, right. the, for himself or for a person and argue effectively against all the gobbledygook that makes right. up so much of what goes on but in the court. But he's very humble. He says when you've been hit in a certain way, you know how to block it next yeah. time. So well, he, that he is, is true. He's old and experienced. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I think in law, that's the one field that the older you are, the more you excel. I think mathematicians peak out in their 20s. Well, you know, they're very but young. Lawyers, Mathematicians peak out very young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, lawyers, it's under, they go on forever. It's, <laughs> <laughs> lawyers go forever, and they're still... They're still going on, I guess, and everything like that. Well, we got a couple of uh, minutes left here and everything, so it's really been good. I'm glad you brought that in. It's good and give Thank our you, uh, and Joe's got a little bit of the flu now, yeah. which is unsad. But I'm, I'm hoping he'll be better by the ACAP meeting tonight. Yeah, yeah, tonight, that he could this come. Is coming out on the 31st. Yeah, right. And it's. Uh, uh -huh. What seven thirty or something? Yeah, no seven seven thirty. You get started, and we're going to try and stream. Forty one West uh, Thirty Sixth Street. West Thirty between Seventh and Eighth Avenues in the Manhattan of uh, the Borough of Manhattan, and it's Thirteenth floor. So come by. You can come by and uh, and and join in and have this lady and perhaps her husband, uh, Joe Barton, who is equally interesting and is a real student of the law in the most practical and immediate sense, can make it understandable to people in a way that they're doing a real good service as part of the public access capability that is bringing that out to greater numbers of people. You two have been doing it, and God bless you one and all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Thank you for viewing. We'll be coming back again tomorrow uh, with more this week about public access as a realm that's of great importance. So thank you very, very much for viewing. We'll be coming back tomorrow. Uh, see you uh, tomorrow on television. And uh, do and come tonight. to the meeting tonight if you can. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Malik, for being so patient with yeah. our uh, program here, uh, taping this program so well. Part of the team here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Thanks a lot for viewing. Until next time. Are we out? Yeah, I think we are.